your Sports 1140 KHTK update. Brought to you by J.R. Putman Plumbing, Heating, and Air. It's Kyle Madsen with your top stories on Sports 1140. The Sacramento Kings lost to the Timberwolves last night, 112-105 in Minnesota. Marvin Bagley got the start and answered with a big game, 25 points, 11 boards, 2 blocks. The rest of the Kings, though, they struggled. De'Aaron Fox and Bogdan Bogdanovich were just 11 of 37 from the field combined. Willie Cauley-Stein, he had 4 points and 5 fouls. He was a minus 20 in just 13 minutes. On the other side, Carl Anthony Towns was dominant, 34 points, 21 boards, and 5 assists for him to lead the way. For Minnesota, the Kings are off tonight. They return home tomorrow to take on the Milwaukee Bucks at the Golden 1 Center. The good news for the Kings is the Lakers lost to the Grizzlies 110-105, and the Spurs lost to the Nets 101-85, so Sacramento remains a game behind the Spurs for a playoff spot. The Clippers 121-112 win over the Mavs, moved them to two games up on the Kings into the number seven seed. Sacramento is still two games ahead of the Lakers and Timberwolves in the playoff race. And the Rockets beat the Hawks 119-111. James Harden's streak of 30-point games came to an end. He had 28 points. He was 0 of 10 from three-point range. That's ugly. It's 801. If you have been injured at work, call the law offices of Doug Marino at 916-564-4000 for a free consultation. Those are your top stories. Now back to the drive. It's time for the third hour already. Show's flying by. Wow. Sports 1140. KHGK. I'm not letting you go to work today. Wait, what? Everybody, listen up. Welcome to The Drive. Morning, morning, morning. You're going to talk. Get on the phone at 339-1140. Pretty awesome, huh? Jump in on our text line at 44-1140. Everyone is talking about it. You must know that. The Drive starts now. Firewings Hotline. Firewings.com. Just wing it. 21 different flavors. At... 339-1140, 1-800-920-1140. Three three nine eleven forty one eight hundred nine two zero eleven forty. In a round table with uh, Kyle, Matt, George, and our guy Jamar is here in just a second on the Sacramento Kings. By the way, Jamar is working hard, hard, hard on the video cast available at khtk.com. Brought to you by Jiffy Lube and SacRepublic.com. From the nine one six, Harrison Barnes doesn't pass. He's been a black hole. Okay, well Harrison Barnes had one less assist than De'Aaron Fox. Harrison Barnes had four assists yesterday behind only Fox with five and Bogey with six. Uh, not for nothing, by the way, uh, since we're doling out accolades from last night, we spent a lot of time on Buddy Heald sitting on uh, Willie Cauley-Stein getting chewed up. Uh, we should probably also point out that De'Aaron Fox had 23 points on 24 shots last night. I'm no expert, but 23 points on 24 shots I don't think is amazing. Not great. You have anything to add to that, Kyle? Yeah, it's time to call your local Geico agent, Vince Harris, at 916-923-5050. That's 916-923-5050. True or false, I should get to these phone calls right now because our phone lines are about to blow up in two minutes. True. Okay, so we have a giveaway. Yeah, because, yeah, we got Florida Georgia Line tickets to give away in two minutes. Baby, your song, make one of Yo, God, my Yeah, God, stop, stop, make down. it stop. Uh, you want a pair of tickets to see Florida Georgia Line at Toyota Amphitheater on March 1st, 2019, if you call at 805. <laughs> For tickets and more information, visit KHGK.com. Mitch is in New Jersey, breathing hard into the phone. Hello, Mitch. <laughs> hey, how's it going? Good, buddy. Hey, can I call that line? Does that come with plane tickets? What? Can I call that number? Does that, does that come with plane tickets? Uh, is plane yeah. tickets are no. not included. You but can't, uh, You can't. Not included? Okay. Yeah. Anyway. Just checking. Okay. Hey, Willie will uh, will uh, yeah. Stein. Yeah. He's not playing like I'm oh, a man. He, I think he belongs in the bench. I want to see more of uh, Bagley and um, and Harry Giles playing more, get more minutes. I get the, get the young guys in. And yeah. Fox, yeah, he's got to shoot. He's got to take the shots. Well, he shot twenty four times last night, there, Mitch. Well, keep don't, don't don't slow him down. Keep it up. Okay, thank you, Mitch. Mitch checking in from New Jersey. Always love hearing from him. <laughs> Pablo. Pablo. P A P L O Pablo, hi. Hey guys. Hey, hi. Oh man, I just someone just told me my uh, well. Anyway, hey, uh, just real quick though, Pablo, you know. What the, what, hey, on. Pablo, what did somebody just tell you? Uh, you know. Okay, go ahead. Go ahead, Pablo. Okay, good call, Pablo. <laughs> Thank you, Pablo. Somebody just told Pablo something. We haven't confirmed what it is. Sounds like it was something like hang up the phone and go back to work. Which one here is uh, is Moana there, Kyle? Which uh, which which guy do I turn on here? Are you on? 
Say hi. I think so. Oh, hi. hi, how are you doing? I'm good. <laughs> Thanks, Matt. Matt George, everybody. Uh, reports. You're welcome. You're welcome. <laughs> I'm sorry, Pablo really got me. Yeah, are you all right? You still, you still got something in your throat? I'm better than Pablo. I'm just saying, if you want to clear the throat, go ahead. Uh, no, I'm good. You good? What's uh, wrong I with cleared. your voice? I uh, am recovering from a sickness that's lasted about two and a half weeks. Are you, uh, is it called not eating? Yes. Why don't you give it a whirl? Uh, you know, lettuce leaves. Yeah, Fire, firewings.com. There's 21 flavors, Matt. I love firewings. Uh, Matt, it's funny, uh, in the, uh, off season, in the beginning of the season, I was, uh, the pessimist so much that, uh, you and I designed up, well, really you designed up the, uh, optimist challenge yeah. uh, of which you've got a couple losses. I think I saw you the other day, your next one coming up is, is what it's Luka Doncic. It's in March. So Luka Doncic will not score more than 15 points against the Kings. It's the only time that Luka and the Mavericks will be in Sacramento this year. Can I do something here? Because uh, we've had a lot of people say, how have the Kings done beyond any any shadow of hope that we had this year? They've exceeded, yet you are 0 for the Optimus Challenge. Can I make a managerial decision? Let's let's put that Doncic number at 20 points. Okay. Okay, that's... He's going to have 15 I'm, points in the first quarter. I'm two wins away, or three wins away from winning my first, though. Yes. Uh, one Which of, was the most unlikely one when I threw it out there. I thought it was. That's so funny. Before the season started, one of uh, Matt's challenges was... Uh, would the Kings have more wins this year than they ever got uh, when they had DeMarcus Cousins with them? 34, the magic number. 34, the mag magic number. Uh, they will get there. Uh, Kyle, do we have Jay hooked up as well here? Hi. Jay Mars, how are hey, you, buddy? Hey, here I am. Wow, look at this. It's usually just Kyle and myself, and Kyle's got 500 things to do. We've got ourselves a full Kings panel going wait, right wait, now. Wait, wait, wait. Hold on, hold on, hold what? on. You invited me on the show to do an hour of WWE talk. Okay, so you're a huge WWE guy. Hell yeah, uh, so is Jay. I already, it's I already, true. Is that true, really? Oh, yeah. Oh, God. We're even, two on two. I love male soap operas, especially ones with, you know, athleticism. Kyle? Hmm? <laughs> I'm just kind of wondering. I'm trying to get it in my head because it's the first time I've had all all three of you guys on at the same time. Yeah. I'm wondering if the Which call— Which one's who? I, I'm just— I, Yeah, exactly. I, I'm very curious to see. I think Matt and Jay sound a little bit alike, but no. everyone says Matt and you sound a little bit alike, Kyle. Do we? Hi, I'm Kyle. Hi, I'm Matt. See, I I think, though, with his scratchiness. Yeah. He sounds like kind of like Adele. So, that'll be what? a little— She's got that, that little scratch to her voice when she talks. Okay. That is the biggest compliment I've ever gotten. Yeah, that's, that's a really nice thing you just said. Oh, about you're that. welcome. Thank you. He's been he's not been feeling well. Uh, all right, I'll start with you, uh, Mr. Optimist Matt George. Hello, Buddy Hield sat last night in the fourth quarter. Is Dave Yeager out of his mind? I have been the biggest supporter of Dave Yeager for second biggest over. Okay, second biggest behind third biggest third fourth top five. Let's just say top five sixth. I've been the sixth biggest supporter of, of uh, Dave Yeager, but that was probably the biggest move he's made that I completely disagreed with. And I, I listened to a little bit earlier on you talking about the you made the connection to Steph Curry and not saying that Buddy Heald is Steph Curry, but that right. Buddy Heald is this team, Steph Curry, and I thought that was absolutely spot on. Uh, the fact that the Kings were within six and then within four and in need of a gotta-have-it bucket. And Buddy Heald has been the number one deliverer of gotta have it buckets at this uh, or for this Kings team all season long. I don't know how, in any way, shape, or form, you can get away with. In fact, you can't get away with having him off the floor. And I don't care who's on in, 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 instead of him, Corey Brewer. It doesn't matter. Buddy Heald needs to be on the floor in that spot. I'd rather lose because Buddy Heald is turning the ball over a little bit than having. Corey freaking Brewer taking shots down the stretch. Corey Brewer was hustling. He was making plays. Corey Brewer actually shot a worse percentage than Buddy Heald. I think Corey Brewer was in there as much for his defense as anything else, and he's a scrappy type of dude, but Corey Brewer is also finishing up or getting ready to finish up his second 10-day contract. Probably not a part of the future for this team, and it makes you wonder, Jay, I'll bring you in now. I'm not sure which side you fall on, but one thing I do also worry about is you're also preparing for – you're in a playoff push, and you're maybe preparing for a playoff series. Uh, I don't know that you necessarily want to have uh, hidden messages in anyone's head going into that. But is there hidden messages going on in anyone's head? Do we know that for a fact? We don't, and that's an excellent point. Because the whole thing is like I'm not necessarily pro-sit-buddy-healed in that fourth quarter, but at the same time, 
Buddy Hill did not really have that great of a game last night. Buddy Hill was, you know, we're jumping on Willie Cauley Stein for being minus 20 in 13 minutes. Yes, it's a terrible stat. Buddy Hill was minus 18 in 29 minutes, which sure. isn't very good either. He turned the ball over five times, and, you know, Dave Yeager sat him. Willie Cauley Stein usually finishes the game too, and he made sure to sit Willie because, yes, Willie was getting abused. But again, I'll go back to the point. Buddy wasn't having a great game. So is this maybe we're just overblowing this and it was a simple thing of the coaches wanted to stick with the guys that got him back in the game? I think maybe part of it, and, and we were very vocal yesterday uh, during the whole quote-unquote uh, situation uh, at the end of the Golden State game, uh, that that was much ado about nothing. and That, that was very much fanned uh, right. by fans and a little bit in the media as well. I'm not trying to throw shade at any of the media guys. I just disagree. I don't think it was a thing. So I wonder if having that in the back of your head, had that not happened against Golden State, were we even thinking twice about this? And I don't want to make this a big deal. I just, I personally think uh, when your best player or second best, if you want to call him that, uh, is having a bad game, and I don't think Heald was terrible, but to Jay's point, he was minus 18, and he did have the buddy fingers last night. I, I don't know if that's the guy on the bench in the last But does minutes. one game overshadow a incredible season of consistency no. where he has delivered consistently in those big moments and has been your go-to guy in those big moments. Building off of Jay's point, yes, Corey Brewer and that that unit got you back into the game. De'Aaron Fox wasn't part of that unit, but you subbed him in around the, the six-minute mark, so you expected him to be on the floor as your leader. And then where's Buddy Heald? Why isn't Buddy Heald coming? Your your bench unit, their job is to, if they, you're in a hole, to get you back into it, if you have a lead, to sustain it so that your starters can come in and finish the job. It, to me, it's it's 100% poor coaching that Buddy Heald was not put back into the game, especially when the Kings were only down four points. A three-pointer makes it a one-point game. You put the pressure on a short-handed Minnesota Timberwolves team that has their star player working with five fouls. Final thought uh, on this, Kyle Madsen. Maybe this is one of those instances where we just don't uh, pay super close attention to to other teams, but I cannot think of an instance where a team's best – can we – are we calling Buddy the Kings' Either best the player? the best or second best, but he's one their of best their, offensive player. Right, their best offensive player uh, – in a crucial moment like that. I, I can't think of an instance where that has ever happened. A fully healthy player. I can't think of an instance where that's ever happened. Or or where where that would ever. I can't fathom Steph Curry or Clay Thompson uh, sitting big minutes down the stretch of a game like that. I, that, that would just. It was just what? I, I That just wouldn't happen. Or, or even don't even don't even do the Golden State thing. Can you, Giannis, uh, Chris Middleton, um, Kawhi Leonard, Kyle Lowry, like that shit that that doesn't happen. Okay, but trying to get back in Dave Yeager's head real quick. This is still a young team. These are still young players. Buddy Hield's only in his third season. Given how things are going, it's kind of an interesting predicament he's in because while he's making a playoff push, he's still trying to teach young guys. And this could simply be a matter of Buddy not doing what the coach wants. Again, I'm trying to get in Jaeger's head here, which is a really bad idea, but for the sake of argument, he's no, still, makes sense. it's still a teachable situation, isn't it? Oh, I think so. I think these are all teachable situations. I think Jaeger, despite the fact that it's probably 60-40, he's back next year, 60 in favor of. I think he's still coaching for the future, and I appreciate that about him. Second question, are we not talking enough about Bogdan Bogdanovich and how pretty much since that Lakers buzzer beater, uh, he has not looked like – he's had flashes, but he hasn't looked like normal bogey. J. Mars, start out. Um, yeah, no, completely agree. I was actually excited to see him get – into the starting lineup because I thought that might maybe motivate him to come out and play better. I can't figure it out. It's interesting you bring up since the Lakers game because there was the article that came out that, you know, he's finally getting his legs under him, but it looks like he's regressing, if anything. Matt? Yeah, I think Bogey is, has been probably, to me, the biggest – well, that's that's hard to say with, along with Willie Cauley-Stein, but he might be, to me personally, the biggest disappointment for this season building off of – the year that he had last year. Now I think he's at his best when he is leading that second unit as a primary uh, primary ball handler, uh, regardless of if Yogi Ferrell's on the floor with him or not. But the the outside shooting is something that the Kings could desperately use from him consistently, and he's been as about or about as inconsistent as you can be 
for this Kings team. In fact, if he's been consistent, it's been consistently bad with the exception of a couple big shots and a couple big moments. The majority of the time, it, it's it's flipped a lot to where Buddy Heald last year was the inconsistent piece yeah. that he'd put up a three and you'd hope it go in. You know he was capable of hitting it, but you didn't expect it to. This year now, every time Buddy Heald puts a shot up, I expect it to go in. Bogey was somewhat like that for me last year. He was always efficient, could get you a bucket, whether it was mid-range, at the rim, or from three-point range. This year, he puts up a shot, and I'm almost expecting it to rim out. Kyle? Yeah, before that Lakers game, just to your point, before the Lakers game, he was averaging 15 points, four assists, about three boards. He was shooting 43% from the field, 36% from beyond the arc. Since that Lakers game, starting the next day, or the next game, he's shooting 41% from the field, 29% from beyond the arc, and he's averaging 14-4-4. Uh, four four. Did Harrison Barnes have a decent game last night, or did he have a bad game, or did he have a good game? Rate his performance. I think he had a, a good game. Uh, offensively, he struggled, and, and the Kings would love for him to be able to hit that outside shot to help them space the floor. I think offensively, for the most part, everybody struggled, so I have a hard time singling out Harrison Barnes. Defensively, though, he made up for it a lot. Mm -hmm. He he filled up the stat column in other areas. Uh, The Kings finally have a wing lockdown defender, and and I know Andrew Wiggins is about as inconsistent as they come, but to me, I give a lot of credit to Harrison Barnes for how much Andrew Wiggins struggled in this game last night because Andrew Wiggins is far more capable of putting up the numbers than he did, and I think Harrison Barnes was a, a major factor there. Kyle? Yeah, it's, uh, I, I would say a decent game. I have a hard time saying you had a good game when you were a non-factor on offense, but defensively he was he was so, so good, and I think that was an underrated part of of his game. When we were talking about him coming over from Dallas, it was, oh, look at his offensive numbers, he hits the outside shot. But the fact of the matter is, is he can defend four positions and defend them pretty well, and he showed last night that he can slow down a very good offensive player in Andrew Wiggins. Jay? Piggyback off what those guys said. Again, the defense was the big thing that stuck out with him last night. And I think his offense will eventually start falling. But going back to the defense, watching that, I couldn't help but think, and I'll ask you guys this, how much better would the Kings record be if they had a Harrison Barnes quality starting small forward when the season began? Yeah, I I, I think it's interesting when you look at, I've thought about that, when you look at what Harrison Barnes has done offensively, since he got here, he really hasn't fit in yet. You haven't seen that Harrison Barnes breakout game. So I'll I'll, I'll double up on what you said. I, I don't even know if it's Harrison Barnes over the season, although I think they probably have four or five more wins. I wonder how many more wins they'd have if Harrison Barnes was, you know, his, his average this year coming in was damn near 18 points a game. He's down to 16.9. Guys, uh, since he was acquired, let's see, he was acquired, uh, his first game was against Miami in that game they stole uh, February 8th. He is at 12, 9, 19, 13, 7, and 2 points. Uh, that's nothing to write home to mom about. And that 19-point game, he was 7-19. and 19. He shot 36%. His high shooting since he's been a Sacramento King was against Golden State when he had 13 points, 41.7%. So, Matt, he has not shot the ball well. He has played good defense, but he was brought here, I think, as much for his offense as anything else, if not more. Um, I think he... That's why Otto Porter was so intriguing, right? Because Otto Porter was mainly, I mean, we knew that he was a great two-way player and a good defender, but we knew that his his primary skill set was spacing the floor and knocking down that three, and and he's shown he was able to do that consistently, uh, playing alongside John Wall and Bradley Beal, at least when it came to playoff series. Now, they never got all that deep and never won anything, but he was there and he was that guy consistently. Maybe a little overpaid, but but regardless, we knew what Bradley, or sorry, what uh, Otto Porter was. Harrison Barnes was a interesting second option more for, to me, his defense uh, than for his offensive production. And the reason why is I also recognize the, the difference of scenario from what he needed to be in Dallas over the last couple of seasons to what he needs to be in Sacramento today. I think it's very clear the message that was sent to him and given to him by Jaeger and the Kings when they, they brought him along. It's compliment these players, help us out on the defensive end of the floor. We desperately need a true wing body consistently uh, in our lineup and try and score when you can to help us out, but stay out of Fox and, and healed and, and maybe even uh, Marvin Bagley's way. And, and I, we're seeing the adjustment. Resident Harrison Barnes expert, Kyle Madsen. When you said compliment the players, 
<laughs> I just had this image of him hey. walking in and being like, man, haircut looks great. <laughs> looks nice. Love that outfit. <laughs> That just that was that made me laugh. That was your but thing. but yeah, Barnes yeah. Barnes has experience being like a fourth option on offense, and I think the big thing with him is even if he shoots six seven times a game and he's shooting four or five threes, he has to cash some of those. Like that's it. He's yeah. gonna hang out on the wing. He can he can handle the ball and and you can run an offense through him. But the the Kings have have better offensive players to to do that. Barnes has to hit open shots when he gets them. The defense has to respect him. Yes, he has. And to be, the, he, it, they have to stretch the floor because of him. And I think the shots will start will start falling. He's not going to continue to shoot thirty five percent or whatever he's shooting. He's getting game. good looks. Yeah. He is getting some good they're, looks. Right, they're going to fall eventually. That's going to continue until they start falling eventually. Jay Marshall, easy question. Mount your best defense for Willie Cauley Stein last night because he couldn't. <laughs> unlike unlike what he did versus Carl Anthony Towns, he, mounting it. Dude. Willie Cauley Stein caught a very bad virus in Oklahoma City <laughs> and was up all night throwing up on the plane. It was really, really bad. And so he gave it a best effort last night. But right. when you have an illness like that going against a guy like Carl Anthony Towns, you just you can't do anything. I mean, he doesn't do anything against him anytime he guards him. But last night was especially as bad. So I chalk it up to the Oklahoma City virus. It's, gotcha. a, it's a terrible thing. He was, Go ahead. He was ill, E. Colley Stein. <sighs> Matt. At least he made him yes! work for it, though. He made him yes! work for it. He made Carl Anthony Towns work for he it? He made him work for it. He always he, does. Carl Anthony damn. Towns definitely sweat like a little bit. There was some sweat. Yeah, did you see him? I think after the game, he probably had a meal. <laughs> it's like a light workout for her. It's like a, it's like a scrimmage for Carl Anthony Towns. He just kind of rolled in. Yeah. 32-22. I just got in a car accident, but I'm going to drop 32 points and dunk on him. Yeah, that's fine. Hey, and, and like, it yeah, happens. Windmill, dude. Uh, let's this see. Seven-footer doing a windmill in a game. A uh, couple last questions here. Uh, yes, I agree with everybody that it is hilarious that on the video cast, Kyle and Jay are talking with their backs to each other. There's no way around that, but it does look kind of funny. Uh, hang on, hang on. I'm going to I'm gonna Matt George this. Hang on. <laughs> you, you, you now I got my back to the camera, but that's fine. <laughs> now I can look at Jay. All right, Kyle, I'll start with you. Uh, lightning round, last round here. Uh, Kyle, the... Texters want to know, and I think this is the best question of this whole segment, this rip-off around the horn segment we're doing. Kyle, why is Matt George wearing his King's Media Pass? <laughs> <laughs> because it, because we require him to have it to come in the studio. Say, <laughs> so if you're not credentialed. You know you don't No, have his, huh? his, his work key, his work ID is right. attached to that same lanyard, so he just throws it all on because – like I'm sure Matt's like me is if I separate those two things I will inevitably forget one and you don't want to roll up to the stadium ready to cover a game and you have only your work ID because you forgot to transfer your media okay. credential. Back. Nah, the real reason he wears it is because he hopes he gets like a free coffee at Starbucks. <laughs> They'll recognize Matt George, Sacramento Kings. Hook that guy up. Mostly they just laugh at me. I don't know how you are. I I I will oh not, I just tell them I'm a credentialed member of the media. I will not wear my pass in public. Like even at the game, sometimes I turn it around. I don't, I don't wear it outside I feel of this weird building. Weird wearing it though. I I just no. I'm not saying I'm not dragging here. I'm saying personally, I like. Yeah, if I always do the. I, I hook it around my belt loop so it's down by my leg. I, I don't like wearing a around the neck. What do we have? One minute here. Uh, less than that. All right. So super lightning round. Should De'Aaron Fox be traded over his in and out comments? Yes. Absolutely. No. I agree. Overrated. With Kyle and. Jay, I how can we have a point guard lead us into the future that has has the audacity to say Whataburger is better than In and Out, and then go well, yeah, you probably don't like Whataburger because you had a burger. Yeah, um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know what the best? I've eaten a Whataburger. The, their spicy ketchup is fantastic. I, I will give them that, and they're and they're good. Nobody's trying to say that In and Out is the best hamburger in the world. No, find me a better a place with a drive through. That gives you a better combination of burger and value. That you can get change for your 10 on yes. your burger, fries, and drink. Yes. Now, to, the fries are trash. Yes, they are. And to be fair, trash is a, that's, okay, now I, you're I, stepping over the line the, with the, trash. The, the, fries, the, the, the fries were not minus 20 in 13 minutes. The fries. <laughs> they were, though. The fries are very good if Willie you Cauley eat fries. them within 45 seconds. If you eat 
You have to eat them immediately. Other other than that, you got to make them animal style. You got to put a bunch of stuff on them. I, I understand that. Their milkshakes are bomb. But the double double animal style to me is the best drive through burger you can you can get for the value. You're also speaking from a, a born and raised Californian that perspective. Is true. De'Aaron Fox is not, and us Californians are obnoxious when it comes to In and Out Burger. We will no. go to every it's state. Called yes. obnoxious. I'd just say correct. We will yeah, go to every to state <laughs> in the country and yell at them for not having joy in their life. Find the lie. It's time to call your local Geico agent, Vince Harris. At 916-923-5050. I don't want to put words in Vince's mouth, but I'm sure he likes in and out just fine. I can guarantee Vince That's 916-923-5050. Call Vince Harris. We'll take a break when we come back. Uh, I don't have anything on the uh, schedule here. From I left this segment blank. Usually 830. We have we have uh, what's on tap at, at 850 or whatever. 830 is kind of like a cleanup segment. Oh. Matt like, George, hey, WWE keep it, talk? Yeah, hey, yeah. Keep it locked to 1140. We're mailing in the final 30 minutes. <laughs> final 30 minutes. I'll keep these guys here because we'll probably stumble onto this Roman Reigns thing. Yes! Yeah! Or we won't. It's Sports 1140 KHDK. Now, your Sports 1140 KHDK update. Brought to you by J.R. Putman Plumbing, Heating, and Air. It's Kyle Madsen with your top stories on Sports 1140. The Sacramento Kings lost to the Minnesota Timberwolves last night, 112-105. to Marvin Bagley, he got the start and was very good. 25 points, 11 rebounds, a couple of blocks. The rest of the Kings struggled, though. De'Aaron Fox and Bogdan Bogdanovich in particular, they were 11 of 37 from the field combined. Willie Cauley-Stein, he had four points in five fouls in just 13 minutes. Carl Anthony Towns on the other side, he dominated 34 points, 21 rebounds, and five assists. The Kings, they return home tomorrow to take on the Milwaukee Bucks at the Golden 1 Center. The good news for the Kings is last night wasn't all bad. The Lakers fell to the Grizzlies 110-105 and the Spurs lost to the Nets 101-85. Sacramento remains a game behind the Spurs for a playoff spot while the Clippers they beat the Mavs 121-112 to move to two games up on the Kings into the number 7 seed. Sacramento is still two games ahead of the Lakers and Timberwolves. And the Rockets beat the Hawks 119-111, but James Harden's streak of 30-point games came to an end. He had 28. He was 0 of 10 from three-point range. It's 8.32. If you have been injured at work, call the law offices of Doug Marino at 916-564-4000 for a free consultation. Those are your top stories. Now back to the drive at Sports 1140 KHCK. One is a pompous egomaniac, and the other guy isn't as important as the first one who's writing this stuff for me to say. The drive continues now. Welcome to the drive. Now, match across the glass. I am uh, Car Michael Dave. Final half hour. What if voice guy just went rogue there? Like, and he just <laughs> he just said that about you. He just said just yeah. that that like nobody wrote that. Yeah. That was just his outtakes. Yeah. Oh, I love that. Matt George and uh, Jay Marshall joined us uh, in the last segment. We'll keep them on the round table going into this segment. Uh, I mentioned this earlier. I'm not a wrestling guy. Um, I don't know why I need to say that constantly. I, I feel like I, I do, though. You um, kind of look like a wrestling guy. Do I? Outwardly, yeah. <laughs> you have well, that look. Like, not the wrestler, though, like a no. manager or something. No, I meant the fan. Oh, <laughs> that's probably actually what the hell does that accurate. mean? Yeah. You know what he means. You know exactly what he means by that. Yeah, we're all handsome Bunch and good looking. Weird looking, mm -hmm. whatever. I mean, come on. C can, listen. We've all looked in the crowd at, you know, I mean. It's mostly women and kids now. Yeah, but you don't go to wrestling to pick up on women, bro. It's not something you do. Uh, speak for yourself, dude. <laughs> wrestling groupies are amazing. Roman Reigns. Uh, this is this is actually serious. Roman Reigns, uh, that's his stage name, uh, announced a few months ago uh, that his leukemia had returned and he was at least temporarily retiring from the sport to focus on getting his, uh, getting it under control and, and fighting cancer, basically fighting leukemia. Uh, so I, I didn't watch raw last night cause I don't ever watch raw, but, uh, I'm imagining this was a surprise appearance by Reigns. They advertised it as a update that he was going to. Oh, so he, they knew he was going to be there. Yeah, and he also made an appearance on was it Good Morning America okay. or something not too long ago. Well, I know he well. did that. talk about talk to Robin Roberts. He was on GMA this morning. He was. It was this morning. He was talking to Robin Roberts, who was also a cancer survivor. Uh, he went out and uh, here's a little clip of him talking to the fans here. So when I tell you this, I am so grateful. I'm so humbled, and I'm so honored to announce this. I 
thing would happen there somebody screamed out WrestleMania, right? Okay. Yep. That's what I thought I heard. We'll get we'll get to that later. We'll get to that later. Yeah. Let's crawl before we walk and walk before we can run. But uh the good news is I'm in remission, y'all. That's cool. So so his his leukemia is in remission, and then after about a one minute standing over there, he announced he's coming back. You know, listen, I I, I get it. It's not like Nobody uh, knows. Maybe Matt doesn't know, but that wrestling is scripted and the storylines are. I know. Sorry. Uh, Prove it. But 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 that doesn't matter to me. I mean that that's obviously. I mean God, I, they would never. Like that's not a. thing. No. They so would, I know they've done some crazy stuff. That that, that was my joke. Was this happened quick enough? Like congratulations to him awesome. for being able to beat it that quickly and yes. come back. But it's WrestleMania season to where everybody starts. Like, Dave Batista is back now. If you don't know who Dave Batista is, he's the, the guy, guy that, in uh, Galaxy. In the, Guardians of the Galaxy, of he plays. Galaxy, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. That guy. Uh, there. This is the time where they Big bring everybody fan. back. Love wrestling. Where they bring everybody right. back to create fun storylines and build hype for WrestleMania. And the fact that he's back at this time has opened up the door, I'm sure, to conspiracy theories that this was all a work. I don't believe it was a work. Okay, so no chance, Okay, so that's my question, because I can't imagine that. But again, I'm not, I I really don't know anything about, like, is there talk amongst wrestling fans that this, so there is there like a thing, like even a small group? It might be a joke. Oh my God, that would be the worst. Yeah, (laughs) I wouldn't say they take it as a joke. Wrestling fans are weird. I know that because I am one. And I, like, didn't they once like? Good blow, point by Jay. Mm-hmm. <laughs> didn't they once blow a guy up in a limo? Yeah, Vince McMahon. That's Vince McMahon. Oh, they, Vince oh, McMahon's God. angle was he died. And then how did they get out of that? Like he, he wasn't just, in the limo. Oh, so uh, Damian I mean, Barling has briefly, actually talked please. about this. They they ended up like well, something happened. <laughs> Shut was, up. was it a dream? <laughs> no, something <laughs> happened and. Like something outside of wrestling happened, and they scrapped the angle because they wanted Vince to appear and like speak on. I can't remember what it was to be completely honest with you, but they like they just ignored it and scrapped it and pretend like it didn't happen because something outside of wrestling that was like some kind of tragedy. Or okay, something took place. okay, but, but real quick on that, just one quick point is yeah. um, Triple H told a story though. I guess when that happened, uh, Donald Trump actually thought it was serious and called to yep. see if something actually happened to Vince McMahon. He actually thought. Vince McMahon being blown up in a limo on the TV show was real. Yep. So there you go. Factual. Well, that's not gonna. Hey, do you know what w- Do you know what WWE means? Walk we don't want to talk about this anymore. <laughs> <laughs> hey, hold on. What does Triple H stand for? Can I ask that? Though? Hunter Hearst <laughs> Helmsley. <laughs> He's not wrong. Hunter I feel Hurst like I'm Hemsley. I feel like I'm back in high school and you guys are picking on me for liking wrestling. <laughs> That's how I feel right now. <laughs> is that how it's pronounced? Is, yes. Am I pronouncing yeah. it wrong? <laughs> Roman Reigns is gonna return to take on. <laughs> well, he's that old now, so that's how he has to breathe every time he's in the ring. But he still fights. <laughs> fights. Uh, right. Fights is an interesting way to describe uh, it, but with a sledgehammer, it's real. Hey, is that what do you say? Do you say he he fights? Or um, wrestles. Or wrestles. Depends on the match, Dave. They could be a street fight. There could be a backstage brawl. Ooh, a parking lot brawl. A cage match. Cage match, yes. I, uh, the, the ladder. The, the money. The la- yeah, wait. Don't they do a thing with <laughs> Money the, in the bank. Money in money, the bank. Hell yeah. And what is that? Whoever wins gets all the money? No, so there's a briefcase hung above the rim, and if you, you win, you get a contract that it's you the can ring. cash Not in. the rim. What did I say? The rim. rim. Whatever. The ring. Who cares? He's... He, Top, climb a ladder, get a briefcase. It has a contract inside that you can cash in at any time to win a championship. That's dumb. No, it's awesome. Okay, here's what would be awesome. You get a ring, and then like you so, hey. <laughs> you put it in, in glass or, or plastic or whatever. And it's like the Royal Rumble is the one where everyone fights everyone, right? Yeah, yeah. They throw but, everybody But out. you combine it with like the Chuck E. Cheese thing where you drop like $20,000 in $100 bills, and they blow around. And then they all have like a minute to grab as much money as they can, but they can also beat the hell out of each other and take each other's money. And then at the end, whoever has the most money gets like all the money. You should call okay. it Vince. Okay. Uh-huh. That's a good idea. Or stay with me here Hunger Games. Like for real? <laughs> yeah. What if we just actually did that? Reading that book again right now. Speak. <laughs> what? I'm reading the Hunger Games again right now. I mean. Hold on, though. Did you just straight go, I'm reading The Hunger Games again? 
yeah, implying again. that you've read it prior. <laughs> I've, I've read all three uh, Hunger yeah. Games books because I watched the movies. I mean, I'm a Harry Potter guy. You know, I'm not yeah, no, I, I, on anything. I, I, I wouldn't should, read them again. Though. Let me back up the truck. I'm I'm listening to this one on tape. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Makes... Audible, baby. I can't do that. I've tried. I had, an, I had an Audible account apparently for four years, and I didn't know about it. Yeah, dude. I was just shelling out 15 bucks a exactly month. That's what I was doing. Service I wasn't using. I had credits for like 60 books apparently. I'll take them. So I download. No, I, I have all these books that I downloaded. I tried to do that uh, a couple vacations ago, like three weeks ago. And I, I put in, uh, I don't know what it was, like a wrinkle in time or something. And I'm just... Uh, once upon a time, you know, something happened. You know what it is for me? Huh. It's 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 the looking at the length of the. <laughs> <laughs> We're talking about wrestling. Uh, we'll take a break. Uh, it's, no, it's looking at 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 how long the stories are. It's like I, I was gonna listen to it by Stephen King. It's like ninety six hours to yeah. listen to this entire book. book. Is this for like this for like truck drivers? Right? Yeah, I, and, I and listen to it during my commute. Yeah, I imagine if I had a long commute or something, yeah, because I do that sort of with with podcasts and other audio content. But I just the books, they're awesome. Okay, they also have audio Let's dramas. Go. All right, like Alien Radio. We'll take a break. Not kidding. I've got a shower after that segment. They have wrestling books on Audible. Oh, they have wrestling coloring books too. They yes. do. I had them when I was a kid. We'll take a break when we come Wait, back. Can we go? Yeah, when we come back, what's on tap? And uh, we'll get to this Mike Bibby story next. Sports 1140 KHDK. It's the end of the show. But it's the start of your workday. <laughs> For a cold one, it's what's on tap. Here's what's on tap. What's on tap? Brought to you by... Wrestling. wrestling when you've got a decision to make and you just don't know which way to go you're wrestling with one side or the other it's an internal thing never an easy thing when you're making a decision and you just don't know which way to go screw it it's all scripted anyway it's all scripted anyways wrestling try it today (laughs) hey dave i saw you coming out of a winco once You weren't driving a Dodge. Look like a Jeep to me. Your secret is safe. Well, it's not really a secret. I was driving a Hoblet Jeep. They change them out every couple months. Then I was driving a Hoblet truck. Not really a secret. I mean, I appreciate you keeping it safe. A Jeep Grand Cherokee is my dream car. Yeah. So maybe I'll have to forego my love of hassle and pressure and my... my Love of long distance driving to the airport. Make your dreams a reality. Yeah. And boogie on over to Hoblet. Did you know the Dallas Cowboys are worth a lot of money? No. Yeah. What? An estimated value of four point well, actually over five billion now. Did you know that five years before Jerry Jones purchased the Cowboys in nineteen eighty nine? Two point four million. There's another guy who had a shot at it. Pretty big business, man. That's a pretty big job now. Norman Rockefeller. You're close. <laughs> that that famous wrestler. <laughs> Triple H? Back in 1984, the founding owner of the Cowboys, Clint Murchison Jr., was looking to sell the team. Donald Trump. Donald Trump. Donald Trump appeared to show interest. However, instead of buying the Cowboys, Trump decided to purchase the New Jersey Generals of the USFL. That's Mm -hmm. not the fun part. The fun part is that he turned down the opportunity to buy the Cowboys for $50 million. During a 1984 interview with the Times, Trump explained why he decided to pass. Quote, I feel sorry for the poor guy who's going to buy the Cowboys. It's a no-win situation for him because if he wins, well, so what? They've won through the years. And if he loses, which seems likely because they're having troubles, he'll be known to the world as a loser. The reason Trump uh, bought the, the generals is <laughs> he only had to pay $10 million. It was $40 million cheaper than buying an NFL team. Trump thought there was more room for profit. I could have bought an NFL club for $40 million or $50 million, but it's established, and you would just see it move laterally. Not enough to create there, profit-wise. Oy. 
<laughs> now it's made a light four billion nine hundred and fifty million dollars. Now, in defense, I know you're looking at me like, how is that possible? Mm-hmm. Well, everybody thought the USFL was going to take off. It's not necessarily clear in hindsight that Trump made the wrong decision. In 1984, Murchison ended up selling the team to businessman Bum Bright for $86 million. Oh. By the time Bright sold the team to Jerry Jones five years later, the Cowboys were losing over $1 million per month. Oh, snap. Then Jerry Jones bought the team in February 1989 for $140 million, currently worth over five billion dollars a some 3600 percent return on the investment in his 29 years as the owner so oof, my goodness from the 209 somebody called dave out he downloaded books a couple vacations ago like three weeks ago bro you were on vacation last week and i was on vacation two weeks before that that was the joke ha <laughs> ha Bang. Got him. All right. Uh, no way to segue into this. No way to segue out of it. And I've waited till the end of the show because I just, it's one of those stories I'm just going to read verbatim and not comment on whatsoever. A high school teacher at Shadow Mountain High School in Phoenix received a restraining order against former NBA player and Sacramento King Mike Bibby after alleging that the former Sacramento King star, uh, nope, not going to say that word out, uh, groped her in 2017. The Arizona Republic also reports uh, that Bibby, who is the current boys basketball coach at the school, is under investigation by Phoenix police. Though his attorney, uh, his attorney has, of course, uh, denied the allegations. The alleged incident took place February 14, 2017, in the parking lot of the school as the teacher was walking to her classroom. Uh, Bibby allegedly called her over to his car, grabbed her by the hips, pushed her into the driver's seat, uh, and got on top of her, telling her, quote, what I could do to you again. This is according to to the complaint. Uh, School district spokeswoman Becky Kelbaugh confirmed there had been an internal investigation into allegations before Phoenix PD informed them of the incident earlier this month. Mike Bibby's lawyer, Donald Harris, categorically denied the allegations. Quote, I can say with pretty much certainty that this alleged incident didn't happen and that will be shown down the road. Mike Bibby did not participate in a sexual assault of any way, shape, or form that was alleged by this lady years ago. So, obviously, that story will continue to develop. And uh, we'll follow the developments and save any comments uh, once the legal system has done their job. Uh, Kyle, segueing right out of this into an impossible segue, uh, Robbie Gould has been <laughs> franchised. Oh, Snap. By the San Francisco 49ers. Oh, you have to go do things now? I just lost Kyle. Yes. I just lost him for... There's like three minutes left in the show. Kyle's got to go blog. Robbie Gould, one of the first free agents signed by the... Well, see, I'm good at my job and have a story pre-written, so I just have to post it. Oh! Oh! Dot gif. Kyle Shanahan, general manager. John Lynch took over in 2017. Again, he was one of the first free agents signed. Uh, he will now be around for at least one more season after he received the team's franchise tag today. The tag is projected to be just more than $5 million. In unrelated news, the Chicago Bears uh, either have released or are releasing. I know I had this story yesterday. Uh, Cody Parkey. So, I guess that didn't work out. <clears throat> Michael Crabtree has been released by the Baltimore Ravens. I remember when, how did it go? It was, I remember just dragging the Raiders for drafting, I hope I'm getting this right, Darius Hayward Bay. Yeah, that was him. Ahead of Michael Crabtree. Yep. When everyone was like, bro. But then in the beginning, it was like, eh, is Michael Crabtree going to be good? Is it gonna? Is it gonna be good? I don't know. Michael Crabtree is not gonna be Hall of Famer. I mean, this just in. I feel like Michael Tra- Crabtree's put together a respectable career as a wide receiver. A fair to say, Michael Crabtree's put together a respectable career as a wide receiver. Nothing, nothing 
That's a Hall of Fame worthy. But good for him. Better career than I had as a wide receiver. The Oakland Raiders are going to announce they are playing in Oakland in 2019. Uh, No idea how that came together. (laughs) Davis said the Raiders explored their options throughout the process, but it appears the only site they seriously considered uh, was Oracle, now formerly AT&T Park, uh, the current home of the San Francisco Giants. Problem is the uh, Giants and Larry Bear were initially the only party on board <laughs> looking for the fat rent check, uh, but the 49ers uh, were not fans of that move. Hey, once again, a San Francisco team blocking an Oakland team from doing something. And I say that as a Niners and Giants fan. By the way, I don't know if you saw the uh I don't know if you saw the release of the A's new ballpark. They released more uh pictures, mock ups and all that. Looks nice. God, I hope they get that. I really do. For all the latest on Robbie Gould signing a franchise tag with the forty ers check out Ninerswire.com. <laughs> Is it that quick? If I had a nickel, man. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, lastly, Kyle. Nothing from that? All right. No, no, come on. It was funny. I, I, I want to acknowledge it. It's funnier okay, that way. Thanks. Lastly, Kyle. Um, I, I, I didn't want, I'm not going to do anything with this because, um, the, the Kings didn't win. Mm-hmm. I'm going to wait till after a win. But you know, a little project we were working on, um, involving, what we wanted the Kings, um, yes, intros to be not uh-huh. the not the not the song at the end. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The intro, yeah. the intros. I I got something in the mail yesterday, and uh, at 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 some point, maybe when we win. Oh snap! I'll play it for you, complete with sound. My thanks to Jay Mars, Matt George, Kyle Madsen. I'm Carmichael Dave. Jim Rome is next. Thank you for joining us. We'll see you tomorrow at 6 a.m. Enjoy the rest of your broadcast day. Right here on Sports 1140 KHK. Bye-bye now.